one of the stalls here is where Paul was taking his Snapchat video of cash. What's up, guys? True crime lovers. How we doing? All right. So just like I just posted a, a, a video a animation of the Koberger murders, the Idaho Four murders. Well, this is an animation of the Alex Murdoch murders. So um, I've, already, I've actually already seen this. This is pretty good. Uh, I'll link this guy's channel down in the description. Um, they're pretty good. But uh, this is a pretty accurate uh, animation of, of what happened, uh, according to all the testimony. So, uh, you know, hit that like and subscribe button for me. We're almost to a thousand. Uh, let's, let's keep this algorithm up. Let's keep growing the channel. And uh, here we go. It's also the video where you can hear the voice of Alec in the background. At the end of the building is where the feed room is. <clears throat> As we circle around here, we can see the doghouse and animal cage against the wall, which both had bullet holes in them. As we look at this whole view here, I'm going to show an animation later on of how this all possibly happened. <clears throat> and one last thing, I wanted to show how close the house was in this illustration. In my opinion, there's no way that someone couldn't have heard seven air shots being fired from the house and where the crime was yes yeah, seven ar shots and then two shotgun shots so nine shots total and all taking a video at the end of day 8 46. a few minutes later all right so this is paul later he was walking to the feed room He's texting a friend and reads his last text at 8.48.59. So right now, he, he, he thinks he's in the safest place in the world, right? He is in on his property, um, or his father and his mother and father's property. He's, you know, texting his friend. He's, he's next to his dogs. Uh, there's no you know other houses around for you know he this is a big property you know he's not thinking his father's about to come shoot him with a shotgun right seconds later the first shot is fired oh i mean that's his father at 8.49.01, his phone is forever locked and never used again. Blood drips from Paul's left arm as he staggers to the door. All right, so real quick, right here, Alec, he thinks Paul is dead already. So he's putting the gun down, right? So he's about to get startled uh, when Paul s starts stumbling out the door. So that's why we have the shot that goes upward, because he was putting his shotgun down. He sees Paul, and then he he fires and just uh, at, he he blew his brain out his head, literally. The gunman, thinking he had killed Paul with the first shot, goes to get his other weapon, but is shocked when he senses Paul by the door. I mean, I can't imagine what. All those first responders, they, you know, and every all, everybody had to see that, right? That's just... Alec, he didn't care about anybody but himself. And we can say without a doubt, we don't have to say allegedly, he has been convicted and sentenced to the rest of his natural life in, for, in prison. The judge threw away the key. A second earlier, Maggie at 849 reads her last text and is interrupted by the sound of gunfire. She turns to run back. Yeah, so Maggie, she, the last thing that will go through her head is the guy, the person that she has been married to for however many years just killed 
her their son, right? So so she's thinking that there must be an intruder. She's trying. She's probably trying to go find her husband, you know, to see you know what's going on and for protection, right? Betrayed in the in the most cowardly, uh, just an evil way you can possibly be betrayed. The gunman grabs his gun and runs towards Maggie. As she approaches, she sees Paul on the ground, but the gunman stops her. So he shoots her twice, one in the stomach, one goes through the upper thigh, and then he cut, he turns around and shoots her through the, you know, through the back of the head. When it goes through her breast and out out her head. I mean, he didn't take any chances. He he wanted to make sure that they were dead, right? And we and then we saw him, you know, on the police body cam footage, asking the police. Uh, are they dead? Uh, did is anybody gonna go check them? You know, with them fake crocodile tears. You know, it's just sad. Let's rewind this so we can see the pathologist's report. Now let's circle around and see the path of the bullets. Here we see the two entrant wounds, one here and another here. Circling around to the back. I tell you what, she's she's in pain for a, a couple seconds because uh, apparently it's really painful to get shot right here in the, in the gut, right? And then, I mean, this bullet probably shatters her whole you know, femur. I mean, mm. we can see those exit wounds. Now we can see those wounds, one here and the other here. And that the AR, I mean, it was really only made for one purpose, and that's war. That's hunting humans, right? and shooting targets, but, you know, the only reason the army uses it is for, you know, hunting other humans and killing. Continuing on to the last illustration, we can see how she was shot in an upward direction. The bullet going through her breast and into the head. Okay, and now he's going to show you that what Alec said he did, he, he, he said he checked the, both of their pulses. Uh, he's going to prove that uh, it's not uh, possible uh, in the time frame that was, uh, that was allowed. Yep, so as you see, uh, at 10.06, at, at 14, he should be on the phone with police, which is right now, but he's not, right? He, he, he couldn't have been. I recorded a family member doing the scene. He was unaware of the Murdoch case and was running a what would you do scenario if you came upon two family members like this 
Distances and layout were matched to the crime scene with boxes. My actor was told, you drive up, you see them on the ground, and quickly put the car in park. You get out, and you run to the second person and take a pulse. You then run to the first person and check their pulse. Your phone is in the vehicle, so you go there and call 911. My actor's times were 15 seconds longer than this illustration on the fa on his fastest run. So even doing as fast as he could, it was still 15 seconds longer than what Alec Murdoch claimed, right? So we know, we know that Alec was lying again, right? But, uh, yeah, that's the end of it. I hope you guys liked it. And until next time, True Crime King, out.